Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 25th of September, and we're in the 25th week of the Church's Ordinary Time. Today is a feria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbour, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Zechariah, uh, chapter 2. Raising my eyes, I saw a vision. It was this. There was a man with a measuring line in his hand. And I asked him, what are you, where are you going? And he said, to measure Jerusalem, to find out her breadth and length. And then, while the angel who was talking to me stood still, Another angel came forward to meet him. He said to him, Run and tell the young man this. Jerusalem is to remain unwalled because of the great number of men and cattle there will be in her. But I, it is the Lord who speaks, I will be a wall of fire for her all around her and I will be her glory in the midst of her. Sing, rejoice, daughter of Zion, for I am coming to dwell in the middle of you. It is the Lord who speaks. Many nations will join the Lord on that day. They will become his people. The word of the Lord. The gospel continues in Luke chapter 9. At a time when everyone was full of admiration for all he did, Jesus said to his disciples, For your part, you must have these words constantly in your mind. The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. But they did not understand him when he said this. It was hidden from them, so that they should not see the meaning of it. And they were afraid to ask him about what he had just said. The Gospel of the Lord. Beginning with the Gospel, this is in Luke, another forecast by Jesus of what's going to happen. He's becoming increasingly aware how close the final journey to Jerusalem is going to be where he is going to suffer and die and be and rise again. And he tries to tell the disciples in Matthew and Mark the ignorance is pretty well blamed fair and square on the lack of faith of the apostles. They don't believe or understand or have faith enough in Jesus to accept what he says. In Luke there's a, a slight mitigation that says it's hidden from them that they, they probably did want to know more, they didn't understand it, and in a sense it was being hidden from them. Whatever the reason, the disciples certainly weren't fully prepared in their own minds, even though Jesus had tried to prepare them for what was to come. But Jerusalem was to be the focus, both of the disaster and the glory. The disaster of the unfair trial, the painful torture and crucifixion, and death of Jesus, and then the glorious resurrection three days later. This ties in with the first reading. It's from a prophet, Zechariah, who prophesied the same time as the other prophet we've been having all week, Haggai, and it's all about the rebuilding of Jerusalem and how Jerusalem is going to become the centre of God's saving presence in the world. And in the prophecy of Zechariah, he has a number of different visions about various aspects of the rebuilding of Jerusalem. But in this one we hear about a man trying to measure the air, the four corners of the city of Jerusalem, and then being told, don't bother, don't bother. So many people are going to come to Jerusalem, not just Jews, but from all over the world, that no, no walls you put up could begin to contain the numbers that are going to come. But that God is going to provide a fence all around it, a wall of fire, to keep everybody who's in Jerusalem, in this huge gathering of people from all across the world, safe. And in the midst of Jerusalem, the glory of God will dwell. He will be present. Um, it's the word all the way through the, the Old Testament for God's presence, the Shekinah, the glory of God, whether in the tabernacles, whether in talking to Moses in the desert, talking to Isaiah, etc. Uh, talking to, yes, Isaiah and uh, Elijah. Jerusalem for us, 
seems to be a place of the greatest conflicts in the world. Um, it's the focus of the East, the Palestinian Jewish conflict. It's the focus of land grabs. It's the focus of both the Christian and the um, Muslim sense of being pushed out. Um, it's, it's the holy city of all so many of the world's main religions, Christianity, Judaism and Islam. So it is a place of controversy, but in the Bible, in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament, it represents the focus of God's kind of presence, the place that God joins heaven and earth. So Jerusalem is often spoken of as the city of gold, and those of you who know some of the beautiful songs will know the city of gold is one of the great songs about Jerusalem. We'll turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, open to us the treasures of your love. Christ became man to make us sons and daughters of God, and he intercedes for us before God our Father. Let us thank him for his loving mercy and pray. Open to us the treasures of your love. You have enlightened us in baptism. We consecrate our day to you. Open to us the treasures of your love. Fill us with praise of you today. May we take your word with us wherever we may go. Open to us the treasures of your love. Teach us to respond to your word like Mary our mother. May your word be fruitful in us. Open to us the treasures of your love. Give us courage when things go wrong. Strengthen us with faith in you, with hope in your promises and with love of your will. Open to us the treasures of your love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. We pray, let the splendour of the resurrection light up our hearts and minds, Lord, scattering the shadow of death and bringing us to the radiance of eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Have a good day. All the best.